Hello guys, so um, today I'm making a video because at the end of the month it's going to be my uh, mark of two years of being a full-time reseller. So I wanted to make a video uh, basically just saying my top 10 lessons that I've learned being a full-time reseller. So I made a little list here on my phone, so I'm going to be looking at this, so just bear with me. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a quick, simple video today. So my number one lesson is to be patient for items to sell. I remember when I first started, I was basically like, I would list something and then I would be staring at it, wondering why it hasn't sold yet, but it's only been listed for eight hours. But I learned over time that yes, yeah, sometimes things will take time to sell. So that's number one. Number two kind of ties into that, which is to chill on the markdowns. Because what happens is like you get so like impatient with something not selling that you'll start marking marking the item down way too soon. What happens when you do that is you sell the item quick, yes, but you're losing potential profit on the item. Sorry if Harley barks in the background. So number three is to start bookkeeping ASAP. I cannot express that enough because it's so embarrassing, but my first year I did not keep track of anything. So at the end of the year I had to go back in from scratch and that really sucked. So if you're just starting out being doing this full time, I highly suggest start bookkeeping, keep track of your sales because you have to pay taxes. Number four is to diversify on other platforms, but focus and build on your main. So for me, I was selling on eBay also, which it was great to have that extra money. eBay didn't work out for me. So now I sell on Vinted aside from Poshmark, but Poshmark is my number one and my main selling platform. So I do focus, um, I'd say 80% on there just because I make the most money on there. So I recommend branching out, trying new platforms, seeing what works for you because that those little sales on other platforms add up. I would say on Vinted, I probably make maybe like an extra $100, $200 a month. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if Poshmark is slow, then that extra $100, $200 a month definitely helps me out a lot with bills. Number five is create an inventory system that works for you. So my little background here, this is my inventory. I have an inventory system put in place and when I started doing this, it saved me so much time in shipping because before I had tubs and I had them labeled by like tops, shorts, jeans, and that worked for a little while when I only had 100 items. But when I had, you know, 300, 500, 700 items for sale and digging through those bins trying to find the item that sold sucked. Shipping would take me sometimes like two to three hours. So get an inventory system that works for you. There's there's a lot of um, inventory systems that you can use. I think I have a video on mine if you scroll back through my videos. If not, maybe I should make an updated video on my inventory system. I'll have to look into that. Next, number six is time is money. Uh, find ways to save time such as photographing and shipping systems. So that kind of ties in also with like your inventory system to save my, uh, to save time on shipping. For me, like I have like, um, I mean, yeah, shipping. So like photographing, for instance, like before I would stress so much about my follies and it was taking me hours upon hours to photograph 10 items. And that's like not normal, like it shouldn't be like that. So I decided to invest in like a backdrop on the wall that I really liked. So now I can just like hang some stuff. I still do flallies for certain things like shoes and pants and certain tops that I think will just look good as a flat lay. But I think instead of stressing about what your photos look like, just get the photos done. I think that's the most important thing is to just get the photos done, get your listings up and don't stress so much on everything being perfect because you don't know that my, that item might just sell the way it is. And if not, then you can re-photograph it later. So number seven is invest in products that will save you time and improve your business. Um, examples would be like a better printer, uh, a computer, a backdrop, a light kit. Light kit is definitely like number one on my list. If you don't have a light kit right now, 
that that should be like your number one investment because then you can take photos anytime you want. You don't have to wait for a sunny, nice day to take your photos. So definitely get a light kit. Next, number eight is to focus on in-demand items and trends, quality over quantity. That is a big one. So I know like if you have like a Goodwill outlet near you, then you're just guilty of this. I'm still guilty of this, to be honest. I still do it. Like not as much, not as bad as what I used to, but I still do this sometimes. You think because the item is so cheap and it's barely costing you anything, so you just pick up a whole bunch of stuff and then it ends up sitting and doesn't sell. Usually for me, I'll just send it to thread up uh, just to get rid of it and just basically get refunded for my mistake. Uh, number nine is self-care. Take breaks and days off just as you would with a regular job. This is very, very important. Uh, for me, I struggled with this in the beginning mostly. Now I'm a little more like laid back with uh, reselling. I don't push myself to those limits that are unhealthy. So if you think about it, when you work a regular job, you have two days off a week. Sometimes when we're self-employed because we're home, we think that we're off, but we're still working and your brain is still going and you're staring at a phone, a tablet, a computer for like hours. Just stop. Just take a day off. Even if it's one day off a week. If you can do that, that's a good start. For me, sometimes I even take three days off a week. But I think it all depends on your business and what your goals are. For me, I decided to do reselling full-time for freedom. I do it more for freedom than I do for money. And I'm being 100% honest with you guys. Like, I don't make six figures a year. And I'm okay with that. I'm, you know, I know that if if my goals change and I want to make that much money, then I can, you know, wake up at crack of dawn and work my ass off for hours upon hours. But that's just not how I operate. I just like, I just enjoy what I do. And that brings me to number 10, which is to have fun and focus on what makes you happy, sell things that you love and stick to the thing that you're passionate about. For me, it's thrifting. I am very passionate about thrifting. I make a whole day of it when I go thrifting. I go with my mom, we have fun. And I think that's the most important thing. And if you wanna be a full-time reseller and do this full-time, then I think you should ask yourself why. If, you know, like, if it's for the money, then maybe this, I mean, it could be for you, but for me, I think it's more so like having that love and passion for fashion. <laughs> that sounds so corny, but it's true. So that is my top 10 lessons that I learned so far in the last two years with being a full-time reseller. If you guys have any other questions, uh, more tips that maybe you want to share in the comments below of what you learned. If you're a full-time reseller, then just leave them below. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye.